Hello everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week 12, lecture one. I welcome you all to the last week for the NPTEL lecture. I've enjoyed the process of teaching this concept throughout these 11 weeks. And now we are at the applications and summary side of remote sensing and GIS for rural development. There has been a lot of engagements on the forum, which I highly appreciate. A lot of notes has been exchanged between the IITB team and the participants. And moreover, happy to see that a lot of students found applications to these in real life scenarios. Instead of just keeping these outputs as fancy images on papers and articles, it is welcoming to see that a lot of people relate this to the current scenarios in rural development and the issues. With this note, let's get into uh, week 12 of uh, the lecture. And what, what will happen in this week is, we will be discussing about the applications of this software, where to use it, how to use it, etc. And we will also be looking at some real case studies. Why? Because we want to show that these case studies can happen if you use remote sensing in a, in a way that you have um, always used data and other sources, like observation data. So let us again start. Looks like uh, the screen is off. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again so that we can uh, quickly look into the uh, this week's uh, lecture. Uh, on how to use uh, remote sensing data and GIS for rural development. Let's move on to uh, the application side. So remote sensing for rural development and applications included in week 11. What we came across is we looked at a lot of open source data. We created a lot of data that uh, can be mapped and available for the public. We found out a beautiful resource available online for free of cost, open source, which can aid us in mapping schools, healthcare, and roads. Please note that um, when this course was designed, uh, there was a lot of um, emphasis also to be put on the rural infrastructures. This is because you may find links to do LULC, water crop identification in multiple lectures and videos, but very less talk about schools, healthcare and roads in rural regions. I've explained clearly why and how the need is and showed you the tools that can you be used to estimate the length of the road, the width of the road, and more importantly, to document the location of these structures, which are absent in the real life scenario. We also looked at OpenStreetMaps for adding layers, checking layers, and applications. These are needed because we wanted to showcase uh, if uh, there is a lot of need for OpenStreetMaps and how to input more. So if I had done the same study, the same example for London uh, or New York or other big cities or even uh, rural regions in the US, you'll find a lot of data coming up. So it is because the capacity is better in the US to use these mobile applications and OSM software, whereas here there is a need for capacity development. And this course 
and you guys as students who are learning these will have a better niche of using this because now you have hands-on experience you know how to show the data you know how to search for the data in the quick query and you also know how to plot it for applications so now in week 12 which is the final final week uh, of this lecture series we'll be looking at government databases because we are going to focus on applications it is very very important to have rural development infrastructures however monitoring and evaluation is also needed. For example, there's a lot of monitoring and evaluation in big, big programs. However, the data is collected very less for it. If someone asks me quickly, uh, what is the benefits uh, of the middle uh, mid uh, scheme meal, the meal, uh, the midday uh, meals for school kids? It was very hard to justify when the scheme introduced, but then Slowly, uh, we have the data to show that many students have come to school uh, in, in rural regions um, and they were healthier because the body mass is different. Uh, they, they had uh, access to eggs, uh, which is high in protein, uh, and also they were able to devote time uh, for um, studies because uh, otherwise they would be earning uh, or working in the field uh, for growing crops for their food. So now the food is put on the plate. So the two, three hours they work for that specific food, uh, they can put in school. Then they can go back and work in the field for their family. That is different. But for each person, they also work, right? For the food and stuff. Um, and healthy food. Like uh, it's not just rice and, and, and uh, dal. It, you do have sabjis, which is, which is vegetables, curry, um, uh, rice, which is soru, and um, sambar and stuff. So uh, everything is given in, in most of the regions I've, I've visited. And we visit a lot of villages uh, through this um, lecture series. Uh, and in my current position, we have to visit a lot of villages. And it is happy to see that the scheme is running well in many, many re regions. So it's more positive um, and uh, the benefits are there. But the same can be applied to other schemes, rural schemes like Check Dam scheme, Manrega scheme, IWMP scheme. Uh, where are they working? How are they working? We need to see. And with less data on the application side, uh, we are going to see how we could use already remote sensing data, which has been collected by itself uh, through satellites. How can we use it to address these issues and concerns? So with this, um, we will be looking at government databases in Manrega IWMP as a start to look at where the structures the government is putting up uh, and for how long. And then I'll give you some snippets of how to go back to the GIS and remote sensing data sets and, and download these data sets for application. This is going to be just an intro because I've already taught you how to download the data and all, where you will be connecting the data with a problem statement in this week and then making a solution. We'll also look at case studies for applications of remote sensing, uh, water quality and quantity, both we will see um, in one lecture, and then uh, LULC mapping, the different mapping schemes that are available, um, and the new indicators and dashboards that are coming up due to remote sensing and, and the GIS applications. Please note that most of this will be from my own group, uh, because I know what data went in. Um, I know the limitations and challenges, which I will be happy to uh, uh, disclose. Uh, because um, all these studies are using proxy data, which is remote sensing data. So there is a lot of um, uh, uh, concerns for a lot of people on the limitations and challenges. So I will be explaining those uh, in detail, and then we will wrap up um, uh, this week's uh, lecture and the entire NVIDIAL course with a summary, small summary. So let's get in. We, we discussed about the rural infrastructure issues. Um, uh, the water supply, we had looked at uh, connectivity um, has increased, like Jaljivan Mission, the, the tap connection has increased, uh, but is the source enough to provide the water? How do you get a remote sensing data for that? Okay, so if you see um, uh, for rural drinking water supply, it's not possible. Uh, the only thing you can map is the source of the water. Let's say you're taking a lake. Uh, area and then if you the area is diminishing and there's no water in summer 
technically there is no water for supply. So this is how you should be thinking of using remote sensing data uh, for uh, indicators that you cannot directly measure. Like for example, the, um, the little school children walking uh, to uh, fetch water. This is a very powerful image where uh, a boy is going to school, whereas a girl is going to um, fetch water. They should have equal rights for education. They should have equal right for a quality of life. But this is the scenario. So we need to support our girl children. We need to make sure that they, they stop being um, used uh, because of these issues. Uh, we need to support them with better access to water so that um, if at all they are forced to take water, at least they can quickly come back to school. Changing the mindset is going to be very, very difficult. But at least we could change the time that requires for them to fetch water. As I said, when I was a kid, I had to fetch water. When I was uh, in Chennai, uh, 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock, in some, some summer times when the city was dry, um, the supply would come at 4 o'clock in the morning. We had to wake up, run to the street, take water, come back and sleep and go to school. Uh, even that was difficult. But think about the half a day gone um, uh, for fetching water. So it is going to be difficult for us to go into the villages and change the mindset of why are you doing this to women uh, and, and girl children. Uh, the best way is first to get them quick access of water uh, and uh, that will improve their access to education. It's all indirectly connected, but very, very connected, but indirectly. If you say, just go to let, the, let her go to school, we will give you water, they will not um, uh, bring it up to notice because bringing water supply to everyone through tankers is not going to happen. So the Jal Jivan mission has a very, very good impact on women education, because even though it is not on an education ministry, uh, if the water access is there, then the girls children can go to school, right? So then we have rural housing. Uh, the scheme exists, but it needs to extend to all regions. Um, this is the concern that we found. Uh, and how do we map it? We can definitely map it through uh, remote sensing images. Uh, you can take an image of uh, an area which has been declared as a rural housing region and then go back and forth in time. So if you know the scheme started in 2010, you can take images from 2005 in a particular village, let's say my own village, and then see how the houses have come up. And, and uh, if you know that those houses have been built using the rural uh, housing scheme, uh, then it adds benefits. It's a monitoring and evaluation tool. So initially we were founding how uh, urban rural conversions happening between rural and urban, uh, but now we can also use the satellite data for identifying these locations uh, where the housings have come up. And the rural water storages, as I said, if you have a lake and a pond, uh, if the water is drying up, you can definitely capture it through the satellites. Uh, the volume may be differ because maybe it has siltation, maybe it has uh, reduced storage due to encroachments, uh, but um, at least you know the perimeter if the water levels are changing. The other rural infrastructures include hospitals, schools, and daycares. Uh, we did find uh, these data in OSM, which is a very rich database and constantly increasing in spatial and temporal resolution. Uh, the connectivity um, during COVID was less. The, the, the networks, the cell towers, et cetera. I've already also showed that the cell, the cell networks um, have uh, their own coverage maps. Uh, you can just download them, georeference them, and then put it on your housing maps to see if the houses are uh, away from the, uh, from the uh, internet or along the internet uh, cycle. Then we also have uh, the rural uh, uh, locations and accessibility to schools and then food uh, ration uh, shops, et cetera. We did search for ration shops. We didn't get it. So maybe some government agency can share that data for you to map, or you can go to a particular district and start mapping. College students as a project can map all the ration shops in, uh, in GIS platform or Google Earth. Uh, your, your Google Maps that you use for travel can also find these ration shops. The rural roads was a big concern. Uh, as I said, uh, there is software that can uh, automatically detect roads, uh, but it did not detect the roads that are connected to the field. So there are a lot of issues. Uh, just in the last week, we did mention that the distance from the produce to the highway can be highly reduced if we use these roads to a better extent. So in this week, what we'll do is we will revisit some of these uh, 
things that we discussed in early weeks and now address it with what data we have collected over the 11 weeks that can address this. So for the connectivity, as I said, um, we could use the recent, recent uh, Landsat 8, 9 and Sentinel-2 images uh, ranging from 10 meters to 30 meter resolution to map the water bodies, both uh, this one, the rural water supply and the rural water storages. Uh, if you map the supply and if you say this is the supply for the scheme, the Jal Jeevan Mission or the rural water drinking schemes, uh, and you know that the water is diminishing in summer and totally gone, then you can say that the mission um, has to have other sources for water, otherwise it will crumble. So this is how you could do monitoring and evaluation in a very uh, uh, direct way, but by using indirect uh, data. Okay, so the satellite data can give a proxy of the volumes that can be extracted from villages. Then the housing scheme, as I said, you can use both Sentinel, Landsat, 8-9 uh, to map an area and then show how the housings have developed. Uh, we will see some of these housings um, in the new course of time. Um, there's a lot of Pradhan Mandri uh, schemes that can um, uh, have uh, the maps made for these areas, and we can see how many houses have been built. Because the budget has been given. Let's say they give you um, uh, 10 lakhs for a, for a village, uh, for 10 houses. Uh, they should have a data on before and after, so that they know the houses have been built. If you look at many uh, claims of this toilet schemes where they said toilets could not be built. Uh, however, the, the corruption uh, on the ground could say that, uh, oh, some, some people say they, they built the toilets, but they didn't build the toilets. These kind of uh, concerns were raised by people. It could be raised by multiple parties and people, uh, but it can be defended or supported using satellite data. That is all I'm going to say that if you know that a particular area was cleared for a community toilet uh, and 10 uh, latrines were purchased in the scheme, you could definitely do it. So the government can now hold the contractors who are doing these corruption to make sure that they are doing it well. Same with road quality. A lot of people are saying road quality is bad, road quality is, is road doesn't exist after um, um, a monsoon rain. So now you have satellite images that can prove it. Okay, so if you know that, uh, cars are going on the road and heavy vehicles are going and the road is good. But if you know that it is all broken and only cycles are going and around, people are using another way, that is an indicator of the failure of the road. So the government can use, so you people, you students as capacity for the government uh, can aid in evaluating the, and monitoring. So the government is pressured to have schemes uh, to work. But um, down uh, on the ground level, a lot of people, a lot of externalities will make it not work. So the government can now uh, use these remote sensing images through uh, people, uh, students who have built capacity on GIS to address these issues. With this, uh, I will start with one very good website that Nabad has created um, with the support of ISRO. Uh, and it is... Um, mapping of uh, NABARD infrastructures. So NABARD is the rural bank, um, which is uh, supporting all the infrastructure planning and uh, management activities uh, in rural regions. So if you click this link, we will be opening in a uh, new page. Uh, I will share that page uh, with you um, to show how um, the uh, website can be used. But before that, let, let me just uh, quickly uh, go through the bullet points so that we'll use it. So NABARD uh, website in the Bhuvan has uh, a NABARD watersheds and the field data links. Uh, the NABARD watersheds is the watershed management programs under NABARD schemes. You have multiple NABARD watershed programs uh, and we can click on each to see how it is working and uh, where is it located. Most importantly, the location, uh, the budgets are going to come up. There is no evaluation of it, even though it says monitoring. Uh, it is just to monitor the locations, uh, but not the benefits. So we are going to show you how to monitor the benefits in the next lecture. But first, let's see this data, how you could pull out and then use it in uh, land use, land cover maps and other indicators uh, in remote sensing and GIS database uh, for your uh, studies. So then a user manual is available for looking at these locations and studying it. Uh, how to use this website, uh, please go through the user manual and then you have mobile version on the phone. You can actually collect data, look at these uh, locations when you're on the field. 
Uh, you can extract points and data from these uh, field work, uh, which is very important that we will be uh, showcasing now. So let me share the uh, web page. You go. Okay, great. So when you open this, uh, the link will come like this. Uh, but before that, I, I would also like to show you the uh, way to search it because sometimes the link may be updated as I always uh, share. Nabad Bhuvan, just type Nabad and Bhuvan, you will get it. The first link would be, uh, okay, Nabad as part of development Bhuvan, is a gateway to uh, the earth. So just let's click the uh, ISRO's uh, NRC gateway to the earth and then this picture comes up. So I'm going to use the link that we have chosen here. It's the same thing, uh, but you'll have different colors uh, depending on what I selected earlier. So uh, we have this, you can select a particular region. As I said, uh, you have seen, so if just in this colors, uh, it, could be, it could be anything. The legend is here, okay, you can see the legend. It says the projects, uh, uh, which projects are there, IGWP, WDF, all these are uh, both national and uh, international funded supported projects. We have Spring Shed RSC on the spring areas in Maharashtra, we have some springs in the Western Ghats and all the Himalayan regions, um, and which are very, very uh, important. If you recollect this with the uh, groundwater maps that we discussed earlier, you know that this belt is highly groundwater depleted, but very less schemes now. So maybe you could propose using those data uh, to the government saying that they should put more um, structures there. Okay, so we have this and then there's a discussion forum you can click on to see um, how uh, things work. Okay, you can have updates, uh, usability, uh, what, what data you want to have. So you can just say here, just someone um, uh, 15 days ago have asked, uh, can, you, can you put uh, some other data onto it? Uh, and then use for students, can you, can you give it uh, for free for students? Um, and then how you use it, et cetera. So you can have these, uh, it is currently um, today's date and any, any updates, very, very recent forum you could see. Uh, and then also uh, the Nabad Bhuvan uh, will also take you the Google page for some people may take you to the, this one. So this link I will ask you sometimes to log in. So you can also log in as a um, citizen. If you come down, you can say you can log in as a citizen uh, or uh, you can use, uh, if you're working with the government, they'll give you these data. So there's a user manual uh, by mobile app download new version has been released, you can do it. So if you click on citizen, it will open the same page that we have here. Okay, great. So just for bandwidth, I'll reduce these pages. Okay. Um, and then uh, we will also close the other one so that the bandwidth is there. Okay. So now we are here. Uh, these are the different schemes that you can see on the top. Uh, and you can select which scheme you want and why it has been done. Uh, you have to read about these schemes. So for example, the IGWDP, if I just type IGWDP uh, and then watershed development program will come. So let, let us see if they, there is the Indo-German watershed development program. As I said, uh, these some of these are um, um, through government uh, fellowships and uh, partnerships, uh, and it has 30,000 hectares of dry lands uh, through 300 projects across India, four states. Uh, it's a very good uh, initiative. So the, all the red uh, indicates that, uh, and we can see. So let's start. So now about watersheds, you can click on a watershed on Bowen, uh, and then the project, as I said, all these projects, you can individually click. Uh, so I have known uh, about uh, the um, IDF, IGW, uh, DP. So let's click that, and then you can see which states, where the locations are. And then all the states, you want all the states or the three states, the data is there. Here it says four uh, states. Uh, however, right now the update is only at three states. It's fine. Let's keep it all. Uh, they might be increasing the statistics. So the last update is on um, uh, March uh, 22, uh, just uh, very, very recently. Uh, and um, you have uh, these uh, states. Uh, are, you can download the data and export it to Excel. Uh, and also you can see how many districts are covered, number of watersheds that are covered, 
and then area, uh, treatable area, households covered, how many households beneficiaries. So this is what is needed for evaluation of the program, correct? And then the total uh, PFAs, ongoing projects, completed projects. So ongoing is zero, everything is being completed, uh, amount sanctioned and uh, amount distributed. So sanctioned and distributed should become same and utilize uh, in, in, in uh, LAX is there. So this is around, uh, sanctioned is around, uh, if you say it's 121 pros, right? Uh, because it's in LAX, so 122 pros, you can say. Uh, so that is the how much money has been put in the scheme. Uh, and now you could click this to zoom it out. You can click this out and then zoom in to see which locations are having these uh, watershed problems. You can click on a particular dot. It will ask, it will tell you what the locations are. Uh, for example, says name of the watershed is Bundalpur, Rajasthan, Chittorgarh, IOTT, WTCM. Um, and then um, all these things are uh, given uh, in these um, metadata. Uh, how much amount distributed and how much has been done. So it's one crore project in this area uh, and uh, the data of sanction is this. So now what you could do is use multiple data sources to go and see the effect here. Uh, the name of the watershed is Bundalpur uh, and its uh, district is Chittogar. And now you know that, uh, let, let, let's do the Sentinel Hub quickly um, as an evaluation tool because that is what is missing here. Okay. So what you see here is locations, but still it's very, very important, but you don't see any evaluations and monitoring, which what we will be doing. You have the statistics of the data um, and also the uh, when, it, when it came into existence. So you'll have to juggle between these websites. You have juggle between uh, the uh, Indian data site and uh, a good remote sensing data site like this, uh, and then you can just quickly the data. So while that is happening, let us keep this up uh, and then you can click the field data here. You can also collect data for each program. Let's say IGWP, the same program we can choose. All states, uh, all states can happen. Uh, you can click here, you can see the same three states, not four states, but let it keep there. Which district you want to see all district. Okay, so you can also uh, say Gujarat, all districts, watershed clusters, all activity, uh, what kind of activity uh, you want to see. Uh, so Gujarat is now taken uh, and then uh, all, let's click all. And then the, this is the field data, okay? So, and then uh, which watershed uh, we were looking at, um, Gudalpur, district of Sitoga, uh, or Rajasthan. We can do Rajasthan also. So I'm going to uh, uh, yeah click uh, Gujarat all districts. Uh, we can take uh, Chitogar, okay, and then uh, all we can take, and then statistics can come in. So these are the different statistics. Uh, it's it's very hard to clear. You don't see a clear button, right? So the only way is to refresh it while this comes up. So I'm just going to refresh these uh, buttons. So it just take some time to refresh. Um, and then uh, let us go to EO Hub. Meanwhile, OK. So in the in the Nabal watershed, I, I'm going to select uh, IGWP, DP, and then state. Let's select just Gujarat for now. And then district. You cannot remove the all, which is interesting. Okay. And then all I can say Chitogar, but still all will be there. You cannot remove all for some for some reason. And then all or which uh, watershed cluster you would like to see. Uh, for now, let's say all. So all the statistics will come. But now here we'll go to the program again, AGWDP. Uh, state will say uh, Gujarat. And then uh, districts is all, watershed clusters all. Sub activity, you cannot change these much. Um, um, so, if you can see here, all activities are coming. Uh, you want other. So, let's keep it all uh, and then sub activities also all. You can start a date and period to see the data which is available. Again, this data is different than the monitoring and evaluation data that we are discussing above. Um, let's say period is fine. Uh, you, can, you can select uh, uh, the year 
let's say 2012, Jan, let's say one, to date is 22nd March, let's say we. So one thing which is interesting here is uh, we can actually um, do the current scenario. So I'm teaching now in 2023, uh, for one reason is that I don't want to show the updated data. And you can see that 379 points have been found. Uh, you can click, go to the mouse here and then zoom in to one of these uh, locations to look at the data. So the data is interesting. If you look at it, you can click on it. Um, it will have an image of uh, the project. Bhuvanabad is the project uh, FDC, and then the name Bhuvanabad FDC training was given, the date of the training, um, uh, what did they do, start date, end date, amount sanction, and etc. So what did they do? You can see here, there was good training and some pictures taken with the farmers, um, and uh, that's it, the data you, you could see approved. And then there is a person who approves it. So I've spoken to Nabar team and they say very clearly that not all can uh, approve this, only the manager and the senior most people will look into this database and then approve it. Once they approve, it comes online for citizens to see. So engineers constantly update the data and you can see that the project ended in 2018, approved on 2020. Okay, so two years approximately, um, they will use it for uh, checking the data and then appro approving the data, uploading the data, et cetera, et cetera. So it does take uh, a little bit of time and then we can close this. Uh, we can go to another project area. Let's say Dahod. Uh, I'm gonna show Dahod in a very uh, particular uh, sense because uh, I work in Dahod with, with a couple of NGOs uh, and uh, I know um, they also are doing some uh, very good work. So this is not to compare the work, but to take a region where uh, you have NGOs working and also um, uh, people working on uh, the data set. So this is the same organization I also work in terms of Guru Water and Development Foundation uh, as, a, as a visiting scientist uh, for some time. And you could see that uh, they, they are NGO partners. Um, what, what do they want to do? They want to do on weather-based agro-advisory. So based on the climate, they will give advisory to the farmers. Um, agro uh, decisions can be taken. So the image has not been come up. Uh, and now it has come up. So you can click on the image to make it big. Uh, and you could see that um, the uh, farmers are working, um, uh, the NGO people are working, uh, and then you can zoom in and zoom out, right? So uh, what was it used for? It was workshop on, on good construction practice. Uh, multiple workshops are there, so we don't know which banner to uh, trust. Uh, and some data is also there. Okay, but it, it looks like a stakeholder workshop. It's not a fully um, um, a data that you can export. So this is the concern, as I said, we have. We do not have a, a data that we can export, All right? So um, it happens. Oh, okay, so the screen is not visible. Let me share the screen, uh, my, my initial screen. So if you click on this website, uh, this photograph, it will come up. So I'm going to do it again. If you just click on this photo, you can see the photo come up and you can read, uh, zoom in and read uh, what they do. Uh, and it's really good uh, to see some data, et cetera. This, this looks like a stakeholder workshop. Okay, the first image doesn't come up. Uh, maybe some issues there, so I just click the zoom uh, and let's see if it comes up, it's not found. So uh, this is a, some data set on a workshop, uh, but what is it on the ground? What does it mean on the ground? We don't know. So just focus on this name, NM Sadhguru Foundation. As I said, I've also worked there. We will take a paper that we published with them um, collaboratively on uh, the uh, issues and concerns and how we address them using satellite and remote sensing data. So this is how we can find the points and then uh, use it for our uh, research. So it's a date uh, and based on the date, you can have uh, different points. Uh, so the different legends are here. This is one thing at least you can see uh, NRM plantation and horticulture. So you see some plantations and fruits uh, that have been growing here as per their comment. Uh, it is in Gujarat, Dahod, uh, who the farmer's name is there, some numbers and, and links to um, do the things are there. So you can see the start and consumption date is 2016. And this has been approved um, on the 23rd uh, of 2016. So during the project, they collected the data, it seems, because the project ended in 2016. 
uh, but the data was collected almost on the ending time. So that is also good. Uh, and so this kind of data you can extract. So locations you can take and extract. See, the location might be hard to take, but I've already taught you how to georeference. So take this image uh, like this. You can cut, copy, paste, uh, or I'll just show you the trick. You can use a Word document. So let the Word document come up and you can take a print screen. So in the print screen, you can make a, um, a, a small uh, image uh, that you can uh, save as a paper. Okay. So I'm just going to, going to click print screen. And then this is what I taught my students also because the boundaries is very hard to collect. Uh, and uh, so you will have, so on a Word document, just control paste, uh, your image will come. And all you have to do is format and then crop the image and just make it. Use the crop tool, take the image. Or use word, use any paint software, anything you want. Um, okay. So here we have an image. You can save this as a picture. You can click, right click, save as a picture, and then import the picture on GIS for uh, ground truthing and um, georeferencing. So once you georeference, what happens is now you have the locations. These locations can be extracted, and you see those boundaries. Those boundaries can also be extracted. Uh, so this is how I have taught my students when there's no data, don't complain there's no data, but start collecting data. So with this, uh, I will um, stop the um, discussion on this website. Um, as you say, as you see, there's not much data you have for evaluation, monitoring of these locations, where the locations are is present. Uh, not all is covered, so slowly maybe they are going to put it up. In fact, um, there, uh, the IIT Bombay has also been approached uh, by them to see how we can robustly make these databases uh, because <clears throat> the computer science department here uh, is very, very um, uh, knowledgeable of these things and see how to collaborate with Nabad on creating these websites. So uh, it's pretty good to see and then you can remove it and you can see other programs similarly. Quickly, we can do a soil uh, watershed development program let it update all states, how many states are there, more states are there. So let's say do Maharashtra, you cannot take it out, so let's say one, it's fine. All, 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 same period, just search for it. And these points are coming up. So these are the points where a different scheme are working, not the same scheme, but different scheme. So you can click on this um, and see nothing much is coming. So you can go zoom out to see any other data that is working. So not all data sets have the pop-up. Uh, so maybe this one has it. All the green ones have the pop-up. So this is Bowen Nabar, soil improvement, soil fertility, productivity, um, uh, Nandurbar, uh, pretty progressive district. Uh, and you have uh, been approved very recently uh, and 2020 was a project. So they're basically building vermicompost, it looks like, uh, to improve the soil fertility and stuff. So I'm happy to showcase this, which is a dashboard which has GIS and one layer behind, but the idea is to extract this uh, information and use it for your uh, work. I will show you uh, here also, as you, you've seen in the previous, uh, you, you can also put the location there and then see now we have 2009, uh, the uh, program started before and after 2009, what happened? So all these can be uh, directly maneuvered uh, through this uh, Sentinel Hub. I've already shown this how to search for a location uh, and then do a compare between uh, images, right? So you do a NDVI or NDWI before and after, and then we'll do it. So I'll show this uh, in the next class because of time, let me stop here. But please uh, go and refresh your uh, notes on the uh, materials that were shared in class. Uh, again, monitoring is there, evaluation is not there. So how do you evaluate a program? So that is what we'll be addressing in this week. Uh, I will see you in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.